I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood and human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. So in this poem, Hughes uses a speaker representative of the entire black population in order to describe the progression of the black, black people and their experience in the world over time, um, and also present some interesting insight on how we view history and how history works. I'm going to be talking about diction, the natural imagery he uses, and shift. I've known rivers. Right in that first line, two big things, known and rivers. First, the word known. It It's, well, one, it means to be acquainted with somebody, but it also could imply something borderlining sexual or being sexual, like Adam knew his wife. Rivers, the second word, connotes continuity, a steadiness, a progressive, they're moving forward because rivers aren't stagnant things. They are, they're constantly flowing somewhere. Um, and this, this river in particular, it's not a violent river. The entire tone of this poem isn't violent or dangerous. It's actually more reflective and it comes from a wise speaker. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood and human veins. This line is packed, y'all. Ancient. Ancient. It implies something that is beyond classical. You're not just regular old. You're not like Beethoven or Da Vinci or the Roman Republic or anything. No, 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 no. You are old, old. If we describe somebody as ancient, we could be thinking, oh man, they're so old they look like they're about to fall apart and disintegrate right at the chair where they're sitting in. But we could also be saying that there's something great, something wise about them, something mysterious too, because it's like they have wisdom inside their head that we don't even know about. These rivers are ancient and they are older than the flow of human blood and human veins. The flow of human blood and human veins, blood and veins. This is what we talk about when we say, we all bleed the same. And he uses human twice. This is emphasizing like we are united by what it means to be human. The speaker here says he's known rivers that are older than the concept of humanity. Before humans and being human was a thing, the rivers were there. And the speaker knows these rivers. Man, these rivers are so cool so far. And the speaker's soul has grown deep like them. My soul, this is my core. This is who I am at my most fundamental foundational level. This is my insides, my guts, my everything. Deep, deep. It's not shallow. Some rivers you can wade through, like wade in the water. But these rivers are too deep. This whole line is saying right here that this speaker is too deep to wade through. Nobody can get to the core of who he is because we're only human and we can't relive every single experience of history no matter how hard we try. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. Prior to this section, the humans haven't really existed. Civilizations haven't existed in this poem, but here that's where civilization starts. The world has now been born. Dawns were young, and now there is a speaker. There's humans bathing there. This word right here also kind of implies a birth or a rebirth, kind of the rise of a civilization. I built my hut near the Congo, and it lulled me to sleep. Guys, we're building things. We're starting to build civilizations. We're getting more intricate. This is how the world has grown up. I looked upon the Nile. Ooh, the Nile and raise the pyramids above it. Hold up. He's talking about Egypt right here. And that is very interesting because Egypt is a country known for its greatness, but it's also known for its slavery, which could be 
foreshadowing something because his next line he jumps straight from all these beautiful and great civilizations and he jumps right into the mississippi brother the mississippi this is the heart of slave land what are we doing here we talk about abe lincoln and new orleans this is civil war time present president we jump from all this greatness the humans we're, we're becoming civilized we're becoming intricate and now we jump straight to the decline of an entire race of people this shift between these beautiful civilizations and straight to the mississippi and the slavery points out how abrupt an experience for being enslaved is it's like you're ripped away from your home you're ripped away from everything you've ever known for this entire course of your life's history and now you're just thrust into this new environment where you are a slave and there is nobody for you we jump right from mississippi to abe lincoln and new orleans the whole story of abe lincoln going to new orleans was about bringing hope for the slaves to get out of slavery and this is kind of like a transition from them being plunged right into slave town and then going to the hope of freedom eventually because abe lincoln was the guy who wanted to free the slaves i've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset muddy this word it's dirty it's confusion too because when you're like oh this muddy i don't understand what's going on golden in the sunset it's something of high value. It's a treasure. And when you have something in a golden age, this is like the height, the pinnacle, the epitome of your civilization. This is when you are thriving the most. And this kind of speaks to ho hopes of blacks in that time. The muddy turning to golden. It's like the morally messy and disorderly era of slavery comes to an end and brings with its abolition the promise for better something more golden next thing i want to point out is this long line like why is it so long it's the longest one in the whole poem and it kind of emphasizes what we emphasize think about it when we talk about about black history what do we talk about we talk about civil rights era we talk about racism we talk about slavery but in comparison to our whole history, race-based slavery is pretty new. And America's pretty new. We talk, we, we jabber and blah, 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 all about this whole era of slavery. When we have really lived three lines worth of time before the slavery era. And yet we spend all our time talking about that era. He goes back to his little refrain. I've known rivers ancient dusky rivers i want to point out he uses the word ancient twice but in this case he puts the word ancient before the subject in this first line he puts ancient after the subject of this this sentence the fact that he puts it before in this case gives the word a sense of command over the sense of over the sentence it emphasizes it and then he uses the word dusky afterward dusky it, it implies black darkish dim in color and it's also dusk happens at the end of the day from sun sunrise to sunset dawn to dusk this is kind of showing the birth of civilizations to the decline and eventually the death because dusk comes right before night my soul has grown deep like the rivers again my soul my core it's deep it's more than you could ever know and then grown throughout this whole poem we've seen the development of the black race through the lens of rivers the rivers that the speaker is associated with tell the story of how the speaker is viewed over the ages this whole poem kind of shows the nuances of black history and what we call black history one of the main things that this poem addresses is the dangers of chunking history or of being blind to other parts of history because history is multifaceted and saying that this chunk of time right here this chunk of time that i choose is history 
without acknowledging the seamlessness of time and the other many aspects of history that there are, that's dangerous because it discounts the depth of a person, the depth of a race, the depth of a nation, the complexity of whatever it is. And ignoring that limits us because history is rich and there is so much we can glean from it. From its dawn to its death, history shapes our perception of reality and it's only in acknowledging it in its entirety that we open up a world of possibilities. But looking at history, all of it contributes to an experience as rich and multifaceted as the experiences of the human race since its beginnings through its glory days, its golden age, to its sunset, and to its death. We've all got blind spots, guys. That's just inevitable. But in looking at history through every single lens we can and being more open-minded and acknowledging that there is so much we don't know, that can open a world of possibilities. It can make us have a deeper perception of the world and it can contribute to an experience as rich and multifaceted as the experiences of human beings over time. We cannot live a million lives, but we can definitely learn from the lives we've got recorded in history. And by learning and reading and looking into it, we can find an experience that is deep and rich, just like the rivers.